and welcome to our day three where we're just going to put the skirt on. Um, a lot of the work for the various bits I've already done to show you my thoughts and how it works but um, we're going to work this one together and we're going to work a little bit of the green one. Now I have actually put on already as you can see here the little frill on the bottom and I've put a really voluminous frill on this one because I wanted to see what it's like and I wanted to show you. Now I'm not entirely convinced by the volume of that. Um, I think less is more sometimes but it'd still be cute. Now the other thing that I did was I put on my uh, ribbon but I haven't stitched it down yet. This is so much easier to do now. I also haven't stitched down um, the facing on the inside so I can do that in one go. I have pinned it and all I have to do is sew close to the edge there and it'll get stuck down and I just sew across the edge on the top as well on both sides. And then on the back if I want to I can just put a strip over as well so that will be quite easy and simple to do now so I'm just going to take my strip here and pop that on there and again it fits on perfectly so I can just sew this down without um, paying much attention to anything else and again it'll probably catch that too. So that's the one thing I'm going to do. Um, I have put together, as you can see here in the back, just get this off a minute, um, the little dress which has got the lace already attached to it. I think that came out really, really beautiful and it looks just great. And I've stitched down here the facing already, um, very close to, but what I did here differently to what you mostly do, because I've already got the velvet here and it's hand stitched. I didn't want any top stitching there. So what I did was I sewed in the ditch. And when you say stitch in the ditch, and maybe you can see it here, you stitch right next to the seam so that it's literally not visible. And then on the other side, you're catching it as you go. And that's a really nice way. You need to be quite accurate, but I think if you pin it okay, then that, that's absolutely fine. So this I'm very pleased with. Um, I also like the fact that you've got this gorgeous lace on the bottom. It's just incredibly pretty. So I can put this to the side. We're not going to do anything to this today because we only need the sleeves for that. And on this one, I'm going to stitch that on in a minute. Uh, not too on unmoored with it. On this one here, the green one, again, such a cute little combination. I'm going to make this into a dress. So I've prepared my ruffle, which is going to go on here. And if you can see that, I didn't even do it twice. I think that sometimes less is more. Um, I didn't want a super, super frill on this, just a little bit more, so it's kind of pretty. And so I made this frill very deep and then I prepared another one which I've already hemmed. I would always recommend that you hem first. And this one is simply going to go over the top of that one so we've got three layers. Now the one thing I did want to show you guys here is that I've prepared this one and that one. And instead of doing like gathering threads around the top here and there, I'm just going to put them on top of each other because that will make it so much easier and I'm going to gather the top in one go to it and that will make it easier. So I made these the same length. So I'm just going to put a pin in here, uh, put these together and now I'm just going to sew this with a gather stitch all the way around to stitches so that I can put it on here and when we've done that we can get on with the other one. But I just wanted to show you this that you can put it together, then put your gather stitches on and attach it. You need the biggest stitch length on your sewing machine, but I think you already know this. And then we're gonna do one fairly close to the edge and another one a little bit lower down. And if 
you find you have a little pleat in here, yeah, so one is a little bit longer than the other, never mind, you put a pleat in, it doesn't matter, it's going to get gathered, isn't it? So, I have seen people um, do that when I gave sewing courses, like say, oh no, things don't fit, it doesn't matter, it's going to get gathered, right? So, <laughs> it's okay. And then I'm going to do another line. Leave the long thread hanging and do it again. Now I've got this, I can um, gather it. Now my front is gathered slightly more than my back. I'm just looking if I can see my mark for the center front. No, so I'm just going to put a little snip in here. Or, you know what you can do alternatively, if it's really hard to see, just put a line down there with your uh, pen. It's going to go away afterwards again, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then I can do the same down here. Make sure that I've got the front marked on this one as well before I put it on. Just one here and one there. Front goes on the front. So, <laughs> I'm just going to do that and stick it on here. That's how I always do it. It's just my way. You can have a different way of doing stuff, of course. And I'm going to have to gather this to fit now onto... I'll just pull this in here to sit on there. Now I can start pulling my gather threads. And because I have two, you've got to be doing this really gentle because the last thing you want to do is rip your thread because then you have to do it all again. So I am ready. I've got everything pinned in and I'm now going to just stitch it in all the way around. And because I never really pin it very much, I thought I'd show you this method again because it might be a little bit different to what other people do. So uh, what you really need is one more pin. I'm going to steal one from here because I haven't got one. Um, and I arrange my frills or my ruffles as I go along. It's so much easier to do. So you lock in your stitches, make sure that your stitch length is right back down. And then I'm just going over this and moving them so that they look really really nice so here i can really do this like that look so i can just go in there distribute a bit better move on a bit further here i have got no pins in it at all for a whole long stretch and i can move them along those gathers all and a bit of tension it works really well like that um, most people try to pin them in really nicely but such a waste of time you can do a much better job on your sewing machine there we go Yeah, we've got some more which have been put ra in rather ugly as you can see here so what do I do I'll just get to work and spread them out nicer there we go there we are It's in and I did it all with very few pins. I don't have many pins left, unfortunately. And now I'm going to go and overlock this. Before I go and overlock it, I make sure, haha, that I have no pins. The best way is to do this. And if you hurt yourself, you had a pin in there. So now I'm going to quickly overlock it. Cut off all nasty bits. Awesome, I've done it. Really, really nice. <laughs> I mean, here you can really learn how to sew with me. <laughs> um, I can now pull out 
for the excess thread here that I've pulled before that I didn't want to pull and in true style of course it's going to come out harder than um, I'm going to pull them all out to try not to rip them but you see how easy it rips when you have a bit of um, tension on it which is why you have to be careful when you put gather threads in it really pays to not do gather threads with the cheapest thread you've got <laughs> because like it ripping is so disheartening when you have to do it all again this is a little bit like house on the prairie <laughs> oh my word quite cute now quite cute um, and all, all I have to do is really top stitch this here um, look at that oh that is that is adorable I think so um, the next step here will be going back under the sewing machine and just pushing this apart and just top stitching it down if you want to or we could just iron it so that's up to you I'm just not going to do it now because um, for time reasons but that's another one done and ready to go for the sleeves which we'll do tomorrow and we can move on to our final one here where I want to demonstrate again this uh, little bit heat with the lace it's actually not difficult we all know how to do that kind of thing but by now but still so that's going to be stitched on afterwards and so is that so the only thing that i have to do now is to attach this to the top and i'm just gonna very quickly go over this now this part is actually exactly like the main instruction which you can find in the academy um, and also if you're watching it at the academy you're already there if you're watching this from YouTube then in the academy you get this video as well if you are on the Virginia course and loads of other stuff of course as well so this is what is already in the Virginia instructions and really don't need to go over it but since the camera is rolling I thought I'll just quickly do it I'm gonna put a facing on to the front and the facing here uh, needs to be overlocked all the way around the edge what I want to do is go all the way around and you can lift up your presser foot just to help you along here there we go. There we are. Perfect. Put her on there. <laughs> Keeps us going. Oh my word, that is really cute. That's like so little house on the prairie. I used to watch that and um, there was this uh, thing going around where it says, how do you know how a, that a man really truly loves you? and um, this was in the UK and it said if he watches Little House on the Prairie with you on a Sunday morning you know he really loves you and um, I was thinking that's interesting I was a student at the time and I watched Little House on the Prairie on a Sunday morning religiously and my boyfriend then now my husband uh, was watching it with me and I asked him, I said, <laughs> do you enjoy watching Little House on the Prairie? And he said, it's worse than death. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's my little anecdote. So I'm just gonna pin this in here. And now I'm just gonna stitch down here and all the way back up. And you do want to do that with a small stitch length. Uh, 1.5 so that it's really tight here we are 1.5 and all the way down there we go see like that so if it's too steep it'll cause you trouble later on so you want a little bit of a gap here there you go and come back up Beautiful. All I have to do now is to cut right into the tip and now you can see what, why I said that because if you are too close to the side it has nothing to hold it. First into one direction like this. 
and then I'm going to turn it over to this side here and voila there we go all done looking good and this will overlap for all the ones that are watching this over at YouTube and have not done this before it'll just overlap like that and I'll totally and completely disappear and we'll get a little pleat here now I'm going to put on my top to the top and in order to do that of course I need to put gather threads in here so I'm going to put gather threads in here but I'm only going to start there you see when this is overlapping you don't want any gathers here because that will make it look really bunched in that area and the other thing you can also do is sew together the side seam as well and then overlock it into one direction unless you have a very sturdy fabric i say mine is pretty sturdy so i'm going to serge or overlock all my sides before i put it together but all the other ones i did in one when you have light linen you can really do that that is not an issue so let's overlock the sides and then i'm going to put the gather threads in So if this is your right side, what you want to do is have the overlocking facing up to the right side. Take this back round and now I'm going to put my searching thread in here. And my little trick is always that I actually lock in the stitches just a couple of times at the end and leave one open when I do it like this because I know I'm going to pull from this end so stitch length up to 4.5 and then I'll go all the way along and at the end here I'm just going to lock them in not too much just so that it won't come out get to the end here and then I'll just literally just a few stitches right um, and then next one goes next to it that way I don't have to put a needle in on that side and it'll still come out really easily. Just don't overdo this. This is literally a couple of stitches, right? And then here, because I only want to start gathering from uh, maybe two centimeters, two and a half centimeters over, lock in. Go to the end. It's a bit naughty that everybody will tell you not to do that, but I've been doing this like that for a very long time <clears throat> so go again there we are leave a long thread hanging pop this one under and this time I am um, just close to do the same again This time I'm not going to lock it in because I'm going from the center in here to pull them. So that would actually not be beneficial. It's just from the front. Now then, I can pull these in and uh, I can put my top on as well. It's easier to iron it to do it now. You could close the side seams first as well. Doesn't really matter which way around you do it but I prefer to do it like that so I'm going to start on my back and make very certain that <laughs> you know which is the inside and which is the outside right so sometimes it just helps to put it on as it is so you can see which pieces need to go together and um, in my case now this is the outside this is the outside right so i can um just mark the center here which i hadn't done yet like that and then plonk it down and there we go so now i've got this together just one pin will do i'll turn it over and i'm going to pull my threads until they fit to the other piece just keep pulling it's really simple um, if you're bored, you can just, you know, scroll for, forward, so to speak. You don't have to watch this if you already know how to do this. Um, just 
maybe a refresher i don't even know if this is if i've done it exactly the same as i have in the video that i did for this pattern and of course you can get this pattern this is especially people watching from youtube if you want this pattern then of course you can get it um at frogsandfrolics.com there is a link in the description box and uh, if you're watching this over facebook you can just go to the academy um and get it there and you'll find all the videos for it and of course all the videos for this in a slightly better definition than they are on Facebook. I don't know why Facebook doesn't do it very well. I put this in front of each other so you don't go wrong. It's like so disheartening when you put the wrong thing together as inside out or something. And now I'm going to just grab these here. You can see this. And that's my facing really and this is my facing so they need to go on top of each other right so just turn this over so right sides facing open it out and this here goes on there so I need a little pin and find one there we go and then just ignore the little bit of lace and I pop this onto the end. I need to turn it actually because I'm gonna put the pull the gather threads. So we want to do that right. So I put my uh, pin vertical to the seam in there, and then I can pull from this point. And I have locked them in on the other side, and you can see that that for this actually makes really good sense. And, um, and I pull it until it fits on. So my next step is to just pull this out again. It's a bit much. There we go. And do a figure of eight round your pin. So you know that's going to stick in. And then we are going to spread these out a little bit. And then the fine work we're going to do on the sewing machine. There we go. Super. Right. Excellent. I have no more pins. <laughs> so take this out. Check it out, man. That's really nice. Um, I'm always very worried about twisting things, and so I tend to do overkill when it comes to this. But um, you know, you don't want to make mistakes. There we go. So again, I can see this goes on there, so I can flop this one back now open it out open this one out pop my thing on it and there you go and um now i really need oh, one more pin i've got one pin <laughs> move this out of the way obviously and then this goes on here and again i turn it over so i put my pin in exactly where my gather threads are and then i pull it again this is so nice i do enjoy making this there we go the one thing here to remember and uh, maybe i haven't said that on the original video i don't know but this has to be flat otherwise it looks really weird when you're done so now I can go back on my sewing machine and I can sew those here with a centimeter seam allowance. Right, pop it under, one centimeter seam allowance, line up, whoops, stitch length, back down to 2.5. And now we're just gonna sew this in. Wonderful, I can take my pin out already <laughs> and distribute them evenly. So I just need to fold this flat here, see it's all flat, and over, gotcha, pop it under, one centimeter seam allowance, there we go, and then I can pull out the front so it sits nice, there we are, okay, and now I can have a look at all my gathers. I hope you can see this well. Um, put a lot of tension into it. You can't do it from the very start because it just won't let you. It's uh, not that easy in that area, but here we go. There we are. 
and just one centimeter seam allowance, stitch her in. There we go. There we go. Right, so let's do this again. Right, and on the other side here of the middle, which is right there, I'm just going to try to go roughly to the same point. Measuring would be also good, but I just fly by the seat of my pants here. Now I can take my pins out and lovely jubbly. And of course, all the gather threads, you don't need those anymore. So quickly take them out, working as tidily as I can, um, always. I'm not the tidy person, actually, am I? I am the queen of stack. But when it comes to my work, for some bizarre reason, I'm actually really tidy. <laughs> um, I blame the lady that trained me long ago uh, when I was an apprentice uh, in the 1990s, early 1990s, and um, she said, Marina, when you leave here, you won't be able to do anything but straight. And I was kind of going, ooh. I have to say there were many moments I hated that lady. And actually now I'm thinking, wow, you set me on the right path um, to tidiness and um, consistency and all those things that don't come natural to somebody creative like me I don't know if you're like that and you think I can't do tidy you know I'm always messy and I always mess things up well I was like that too so you know there is hope and now it's so second nature to do things well that, that I couldn't even do it any other way even though I tried Wow, this is so super pretty. I tell you, I love this. This is really nice. It's probably going to be my favorite. And now I can go and turn in my seam allowances, fold this over, and then I can press it. Now, one of the things on this one is going to get like really thick because this is really thick linen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock it and that's why I'm showing you this because it's a little bit different. So you want to take your edges off the facing and we just overlock it and that will make it much much flatter. <laughs> And this is why it's easier to do while you haven't got the side seams together so it's not you know a big amount of fabric and <laughs> you get all confused what's what so now I want to put my seam allowances up like that but then here I can actually like snip it a little bit in here so that it comes out easier and not that bit here so yeah, don't snip it where I just snipped it. Snip, snip it a little bit further over so it can sit out. See, now I've got a cut there. That was clever. So you want to cut it a little bit in so that it can then sit out to this point. And the other thing is there's nothing wrong with ironing down your gathers a little bit. It makes it easier to work with and you can, if you're really keen, you can always, um, you know, release that afterwards by ironing in there so I'm gonna put that there this makes it much much flatter um, all I have to do now is to stitch in the ditch like I did on the other one and just pin it in like that and it's super flat so if I turn this over now um, that look very nice actually so well I can stitch in the ditch or I can um, stitch on it the one thing I need to make quite um, sure here is because we've got one on the bias and one not on the bias, look this is not pinned right, 
and that's uh, really easy to do if you got it overlocked on the inside there's absolutely no trouble with that so make it very very nice and flat there we can even pin it from the side to be honest can't we so let's do that then let's pin it from this side and we can take the pins out as we go there we are I'll do that in a minute it's last step one more pin if you will please 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 there we go so your cut needs to be um, in this area here so I'm just going to cut straight up there then I can turn up my seam allowances and that bit can be down right like that coolio oh very nice it's really lovely and flat you will see this a lot on um, stuff that you buy in the shop that actually the um, facings face down that will trick so I can just give this a little bit of a press again as well lovely get rid of my threads okay so I do the same on the back and the back is a bit easier I can just take out my facing a minute and give this a good press and because it's on the bias it no doubt stretched so what you don't want to do is stretch it even more you just want to make sure that you do this really straight and hold it in a bit so that's that now turn it over to the other side because we need to put our facing on and then we can do a little bit of stitching on the sewing machine look at that it's absolutely brilliant so nice and flat and you don't have to worry about like not catching something um it'll, it'll just be in place and oh there's three pins that's just what the doctor ordered and put one more here and one more there this would have been really thick if i hadn't uh, done it like this so yay right let's do it put it under and now we're going to do this stitch in the ditch or actually no I won't stitch in the ditch I stitch over it because when you have a color and it's not like a pattern it's so easy that to see when you go wrong and you never want to um, show yourself up so <laughs> what you do want to do is make sure that it's nice and flat you hold it really steady and then you're going to top stitch it all the way across at even distance and the way I get it even distance is my foot has got a plastic part in the top and I go halfway on that and that gives me the perfect distance to the edge there we go okay I can just line that up what you don't want to do is look at your needle um, as a guide because by the time it gets to your needle it's already gone wrong right so you don't want to do that take this one out Cool. So actually that's nice top stitched. See it catches that in there. I could have of course shortened that a little bit but um, in the heat of the moment quite literally. This <laughs> is so hard to get in here. And now make sure that everything's nicely down as it should be or up here. You can feel it with your fingers if it's nice and flat. Otherwise take it off and check it again. There you go, got your stitches. And then I'll do the other side as well. Make sure it's nice and turned up. Don't want anything too thick in there. Thick enough as it is, this stuff. There we go. Um, this is really weird, this um, linen, because I pre-washed it and it shrunk a lot um, and became much denser than it was before all the other linens were fine and this one was just like oh my god is this even the same fabric i thought let's take this one out there we go pins have a life of their own i think they're on on secret duties and stuff they just run off they do right so let's just do this quickly and um like i said i think we'll finish for today there 
it's not quite as far and we'll have a catch-up day tomorrow because I do need a catch-up day so we're just going to do a tiny little bit tomorrow where we're going to finish this off and um, then after that we'll have a big day where we do the gorgeous sleeves so let's have a look at this I think this is absolutely stunning yep very very nice look at that it's going to be so pretty there we go could it have been a bit lower I don't know people I will not quibble of course you can work ahead with your frills and everything and um, if you know what you're doing then you can skip tomorrow and come back the next day on day four where we're going to do all the sleeves um, but uh, well I hope to see you tomorrow uh, youtubers uh, there's a link below where you can get all the information and uh, Facebook friends, I see you tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Good night.